Sometime into the future, mankind has migrated to the moon. Using the latest, super expensive, state-of-the-art technology, our species has established a permanent city on our closest celestial neighbor. Welcome to Newton City, everybody! This is a world where the smart and fortunate can soar to enormous wealth and power, while the poor and weak are left behind in the dust. This is a world where everything circulates around money, to the point that it will make the people on Wall Street look like socialists. This is the world of World and Economica. The story picks up shortly after our main character, Paul, has run away from home. A 16-year-old Lunarian citizen who was born and raised on the moon, his ultimate dream is to become one of the big players in Newton City's game of money and fame. Rather than waste his time in school studying subjects he will never use his entire life, Paul decides to leave his home to make a name for himself on the greatest and most volatile casino in the universe, the stock market. Now you might think that this would be some kind of political thriller kind of story, just with a heavy focus on economics. That really is not the case though, as shortly after the game begins, Hall runs into the other main characters of the novel, Lee Santagana, two citizens from the lower classes whom, after he had a bad running with the cops, Hall decides to seek shelter with. From that point onward, the story primarily focuses on the daily life and struggles of the trial in a rather slice of life y kind of fashion, all the while Hall continues his economic battles with his trusty laptop. Perhaps the best way I could describe World and Economica is that it's Spice and Wolf, if Spice and Wolf was set in the modern world. Sadly though, this part of the game quickly turned to a major freaking drag, as nearly nothing happened in it for the longest time. A very big problem with World and Economica is that neither its characters nor the interaction between them are particularly interesting, so when the story only focused on them sitting around the table having dinner, it was just plain boring to read. It's also quite disappointing that the novel doesn't really take full advantage of its setting. I mean, it's set on the moon, the freaking moon, but it might as well just have been taking place on the outskirts of any semi-futuristic megacity back here on Earth, and it wouldn't have made a huge difference. As it turns out, some of the people Holt comes to befriend has ended up with some serious economic problems on their hands. And, as you can imagine, that's not very easy to deal with in an ultra-capitalistic world. So, being the resident economic genius main character, it eventually falls on Hall to help them out. I very much like these parts, as an old managed to present the act of freaking stock trading in a way that made it feel just as exciting as the battle sequences out of any shonen action series. The downside of it though is that it requires that you at least know the basis of how stock trading works, Otherwise, you'll most likely just stare blankly at the screen wondering what the euro is going on and why should I care? In other trivia, the novel is between 20 to 30 hours long, has no voice acting, no age scenes, and you have the option of playing it completely in Japanese. One of the biggest flaws, though, is that as of right now, World End Economica is not finished yet. See that big shining episode 1 title? Yeah, it's there for a reason, to say the least as this novel ended on one of the worst cliffhangers I've seen in a long time. Now thankfully though, there was recently a Kickstarter held by Sekai Project to have the other two episodes localized in English, so we should see episode 2 and 3 become available sometime next year. However, I still will not dare to run out and sink your time and money into this game right this instant. World End Economica is a visual with an amazing premise, but not so amazing execution. It has pretty bland dialogue, its characters are mostly uninteresting, and as a result, the overall package was just kinda boring. It's not bad per se, but it's definitely not amazing either. It's a few steps above average, but not much more than that. If the thought of a slice of life-ish story with a heavy focus on economics sounds like something you might enjoy, and you have the patience to slug through some of its duller moments, then it might be worth checking out. If not, then maybe you're better off passing on this one. Among all the other amazing vision novels out there, there's probably something else that would be more worthwhile for you to spend your time on. <laughs> 